I wanted to take you through the process that I typically follow when creating a video presentation using PowerPoint. So I am using uh, PowerPoint in Office 365. So as you can see, I have also enabled the recording tab. And if you don't know how to do that, this is on a Windows device. You go to File, Options, and on the Customize ribbon, you have to just choose the Recording tab, which is not on by default, so you just have to turn it on. Then I take a PowerPoint that I have existing or have one to set up myself, and I create a title page or whatever elements I want to add to my PowerPoint presentation. Typically, you can either, for instance, I use a lot of digital inking, obviously, so I can put that digital inking on the slide before I begin, or I don't have to, and I'm going to show you both ways um, as to how I might do it. So if I were doing it where I don't want to have to do the writing and talking at the same time, which a lot of people struggle with, then what I'm going to do, and I started playing with this a little bit, and so I'm just going to get rid of all of this so we can do it together. I'm going to get rid of all of my animations. So what I would do is I would go to my draw tab so I can click that lasso, and I can choose what I want to select. So I have both minus X's. And then I'm going to go to my animation pane and I'm going to choose what animation. So you can choose something like replay. And as you can see, replay is going to look, make it look like I'm actually drawing at that time. So if you like that one, that's great. You can choose a peer, whatever it is that you want. So group um, 84 apparently is showing the minus X and the minus X and the equal sign. And then perhaps I want to show the next line of the equation, and I want that to replay also. And you'll notice sometimes it doesn't quite get everything I want. So it didn't get the x equals, or x plus three equals. So I'm going to just add that in as well. Now, if you'll notice, this kind of went in the wrong order. So it's okay to drag to a different order. And I can also choose for this to start with the previous or after the previous. So right now, the little mouse shows that it's going to start on a mouse click, and then it's going to show the next line when I click again, but the minus nine is going to appear when I have x plus three equals. And then again, you're choosing exactly how you want this to happen. So say I select all of those and replay, and it looks like I didn't do a very good job because it got the minus 12 and not the minus 3, so I'm going to try that again and choose replay. And it looks like I didn't get the other minus 3, so I'm going to snag that and replay. And then I'm going to choose for that second one to start after the previous. So as you can see, it's keeping those numbers on there. It's showing me exactly what's going to happen. And then I'm just going to select the rest of this and replay. So now I have all of my animations set up. Now again, you don't have to do it this way. This way is a little bit more work, um, but a lot of people struggle with trying to write and talk intelligently at the same time, which I totally understand. So this is just a way around it for you. Now, you also might have, say, a screen recording and I'm going to show you how to do that as well. And typically on a screen recording, I'll just put a title on the slide and leave it at that. So once you have everything prepared and ready for your presentation, you are then going to go to the recording tab. So in the recording tab, this is where the magic happens. And you have some choices. You have record slideshow, you have screen recording. You can also enter a video. Um, I typically don't do that. Uh, but you can insert a video, say, from YouTube or wherever else, or you can um, have audio in there as well. Typically, if I include audio, it's my own audio, and so I just use it with the Record Slideshow. So here's how it works. I'm going to go to Record Slideshow, and it brings open a nice, big, 
you know, here's what your video looks like. When you're ready, um, you can click on the settings and make sure that you have the camera that you want, the microphone that you want, and so forth. And you can click the little camera down here. Hi. And that will obviously give you the camera on the front of your device. I typically don't include my face in the camera. So this would be what my first video screen would look like. And so I would click record. Hi, welcome to making a video presentation using PowerPoint. And you can add whatever you want in here. Notice if you are using a digital inking device like I am, you're able to write right on that screen. Once you're ready to move on, you can either click stop, as I just did, or you can click the little arrow on the right to advance to the next slide. And so here's my next slide. Now together, we looked at some animations. And you're going to see how that works here. And then I'm also going to show you um, how this looks when you just write directly on the screen. So again, I'm going to click record. And when I do that, if you'll notice, everything goes away that I have as an animation. So if I were going to work through this question without showing the digital inking myself, but just showing the animations that I came up with, I would say, okay, the first thing I wanna do is get all of the variables to one side. Now to go to the next animation, I'm going to click on this button on the right. So notice it's showing minus X minus X. And now I would think about what do I have left on the left side of my equation? Well, I just have one X, I still have plus three, and on the right, I just bring down the minus nine. Now I'm trying to get X all by itself. So I want to get rid of the three. So I'm going to subtract three from each side of the equation. And notice I'm just pressing that button on the right whenever I want it to go to the next animation. And then, I end up with x on the left and 12 minus 12 on the right. So that is the solution. Now, if I didn't want to use those animations, because obviously those took a little bit longer to come up with um, because I had to select each, I could also just write it using the digital inking. And I just chose a marker from the bottom of the page here and I just started writing. And then I could do the same thing. I could say, okay, what if I wanted to start with the constants instead of the variables? So I might subtract three from each side, and that would give me two X on the left, and then X minus 12 on the right. And then I would note that I have an X on each side, and I want all of the X's gathered together, so I would subtract X from each side and get X equals negative 12. And either way, I get the same solution. Now again, as soon as I'm ready to move on to the next slide, I can either click stop or I can go to the next slide. Now if I go to the next slide, it's going to start recording right away. So as you can see in the bottom left, it's already recording. I don't want to record on this slide. So I'm going to click stop. And up here, I'm going to click clear. And I'm just going to clear the recording on the slide that I'm on because I don't want anything on that slide. Then I'm gonna click the button in the top right. And notice I've got a recording here and you can see that green marking that I made as I was talking. And on this slide, you can now see any markings that I made while recording. If I go to three, this is where I'm going to show you how to insert a screen recording. So this is what you would do to show elements outside of PowerPoint. If I go to screen recording, it's going to put away PowerPoint and just show my desktop. So for instance, um, and this part's kind of annoying, it makes you select an area first. I'm going to go ahead and open up, um, this is GeoGebra. Obviously I'm math dorking out all the way. Whoops, I did not want to do that yet. Okay, so I kind of messed that one up. So I'm going to go to screen recording and then I'm going to select the area. So I'm going to reselect the area so that it's just this area within GeoGebra. And then I'm going to click record. Again, it gives you the countdown, which is great. So I can talk through whatever it is that I want to show within GeoGebra. I can talk about the different tools that I've created and how to use them and what happens. And note, it's just doing 
whatever my tool tells me to do. Now, when I'm done with this, I can either hover to the top and click stop, or there's a Windows logo key plus shift plus Q. So if you're using a Mac, I don't know what the shortcut is, but you, I believe this does work on a Macintosh computer as well. So I'm going to click stop, and what you'll notice is Obviously, they're always trying to design things for me. You can design it however you want. You can make this video bigger or smaller. And now I'm done with my recording. So if I go back to screen one, I can click on slideshow, and I won't go through the whole slideshow, obviously. But if I click on it, Hi, welcome to making a video presentation using PowerPoint. And you can add whatever you want in here. So as you're watching that video you'll notice that everything that we did on this page would be captured and then when you get to this page anything that i said or did on that recording would also autoplay once you're satisfied and you can certainly watch the entire recording before you publish once you're satisfied with your publish you still go to the recording tab and you click export to video so when i export to video I typically just go full uh, 1080p. Always make sure you use the recorded timings and narrations um, because if you don't, it's not going to capture everything that you just did. And then just click on create video. And to create a video, it's going to make an MP, um, MP4 basically. And so you can save it however you want. And then once you have the MP4, you can upload that into uh, YouTube or wherever else it is that you store your videos.